Today, we recreate our 3D printed loose tenant jig with FreeCAD as a tutorial for the part design workbench. The original version of this jig was created in OpenSCAD and can be found on Thingiverse. It is a fairly simple design and we will use version 0.19 of FreeCAD to model it. If you only want to use the jig, we leave a link to the original video in the description. This video is more about FreeCAD usage and less about the jig itself. In the last tutorial, we used the part workbench to add simple shapes. The part design workbench works by creating 2D sketches and transforming them into 3D shapes. The first thing we need to do is to create a new body. With this body, we then create a sketch in the XY plane. In the sketcher, we start a rectangle that should be the base plate for the router jig. We just put the corners of the rectangle at arbitrary positions. FreeCAD is working with a constraint-based system. That means that we have to first create our shapes and then restrict them. First, we want to constrain the position of our rectangle. We select the two outer points and then the center. We apply a constraint with one of the buttons on the top. Here, we center the two outer dots around the center. Let's add some more constraints. We first select a horizontal constraint and set the width of the platform to 100 mm. In the same way, we use a vertical measurement to set the height to 80 mm. The sketch turns green, which shows that there is nothing left for us that we could change. The sketch is fully constrained. Next, we add the slot in the middle, which is going to guide our guide bushing. We add two half circles and connect them by lines. By hovering over the line so that it turns yellow, we automatically constrain the midpoint of the circle to the horizontal line through the origin. As it is possible to move the slot, the sketch is no longer fully constrained and therefore no longer green. The half circles should have the same diameter, which is a bit over the diameter of the bushing. Each half circle should cover 180 degrees. We therefore constrain the three dots to be on one vertical line. We could center the circles as we did before with the rectangle, but let's introduce a new feature. We can use this button to switch from normal to construction lines. As you can see, all the drawing tools are turning blue. We connect the origin with the two centers with construction lines. By making them of equal length, we center the slot. We then set the distance of the two circle centers and are done with the base plate. The sketch is fully constrained. After closing the sketch, the panel on the left shows different options what we could do with the shape. In our case, we want to extrude the shape. The pad tool extrudes the 2D shape to a 8mm thick plate. We select the upper face and select sketch on face from the task panel. With this icon, we can use a line from another part of a sketch as a reference. Let's use two lines from the outer perimeter and one line from the slot.
This rectangle should become the supporting structure. We create the rectangle by hovering over the outer lines and thereby constraining the rectangle. The thickness of the plate is 8mm and it is 9mm away from the center line of the slot. The sketch is fully constrained. We can close the sketch and extrude it by 50 mm. Lastly, we need a way to align the jig on the workpiece. As before, we create a sketch on the newly created surface. For centering the jig on a pencil mark, we have to create a square rotated by 90 degrees. These lines, however, don't look very square yet. The two opposing lines should be parallel and all the four lines should be of equal length. The length of the sides is 5 mm and they should be perpendicular to one another. The square should be placed 5 mm above the bottom. For this we get the bottom line as an external reference and add a vertical measurement. The two circles for alignment pins are now positioned 5 mm above the bottom. The centers should be on the same height and centered on the z-axis. The difference between the center and the alignment pin is 32 mm. After closing the sketch, we pocket these structures through the entire jig and have a perfectly usable domino jig. In the next part of the series, we will look a bit more into parametric design. Also don't forget to subscribe for more videos on FreeCAD and please leave a comment if you want a particular topic to be covered.